Footage has been released showing the exchange of bodies of Russian and Ukrainian servicemen who died in Russia's Kursk region. As can be seen from the photos taken and shared by the Russian military, dozens of Russian soldiers captured by the Ukrainian army have been returned. Some of them are wounded. At the same time, Ukrainian fighters who were in captivity have also been returned. It should be noted that the Ukrainian army launched large-scale incursion into Russia's Kursk region three months ago. It should be noted that this is the first prisoner exchange since the beginning of hostilities in Kursk. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky urged its allies to stop, watching, and take steps before North Korean's troops deployed in Russia reached the battlefield. Zelensky raised the prospect of a preemptive Ukrainian strike on camps where the North Korean troops are being trained, and said Kiev knows their location. But he said Ukraine can't do it without permission from allies to use Western-made long-range weapons to hit targets deep inside Russia. But instead, America is watching, Britain is watching, Germany is watching. Everyone is just waiting for the North Korean military to start attacking Ukrainians as well, Zelensky said in a post late Friday on the Telegram messaging app. The Biden administration said Thursday that some 8,000 North Korean soldiers are now in Russia's Kursk region near Ukraine's border and are preparing to help the Kremlin fight against Ukrainian troops in the coming days. On Saturday, Ukraine's military intelligence said that more than 7,000 North Koreans equipped with Russian gear and weapons had been transported to areas near Ukraine. The agency, known by its acronym GUR, said that North Korean troops were being trained at five locations in Russia's Far East. It did not specify its source of information. Western leaders have described the North Korean troop deployment as a significant escalation that could also jolt relations in the Indo-Pacific region, and open the door to technology transfers from Moscow to Pyongyang that could advance the threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile program. North Korean Foreign Minister Cho Sun-hui met with her Russian counterpart in Moscow in Friday. 
Ukrainian leaders have repeatedly said they need permission to use Western weapons to strike arms depots, airfields and military bases far from the border to motivate Russia to seek peace. In response, US defense officials have argued that the missiles are limited in number, and that Ukraine is already using its own long-range drones to hit targets farther into Russia. Moscow has also consistently signaled that it would view any such strikes as a major escalation. President Vladimir Putin warned on September 12 that Russia would be at war with the US and NATO states if they approve them. Russia is ready to exchange the lives of its soldiers on the territory and the record losses in October of this year are proof of this. Ukrainian military expert Vladislav Zeleznev spoke about this on the air of the Freedom TV channel. According to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, in October of this year, the Russian occupation army suffered record losses, more than 41,000 soldiers. This is certainly a lot. For comparison, for almost the entire year of 2022, the losses of the Russian army amounted to only twice as much, just over 90,000. Therefore, these are not just big losses. These are huge losses, and I think that they are very sensitive for the Russian army. However, against this backdrop, Russian dictator Putin is in no hurry to announce another wave of mobilization and is forced to turn to the North Korean government for military personnel, the military expert noted. He emphasized that in the future, in the next one or two months, Russians will continue to experience serious losses. Currently, the number of Russian citizens entering the recruitment campaign as mobilized or called up for military service under a contract is much less than the number of those killed by the Ukrainian Defense Forces. Of course, these trends are predetermined, including by the intensity of military operations. After all, de facto, fierce combat clashes are currently taking place on seven sections of the front. Somewhere they are larger scale, such as, for example, the Kurakovskoy or Pokrovskoy directions. Somewhere the combat clashes are slightly less intense, but they are still hot. We are talking primarily about the Chasovoya area and the Limansky direction, the Kupiansk direction and the south of the Zaporizhia region. Quite serious dynamics are also observed on the territory of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. That is, all this together gives that very colossal level of losses for the Russian army, the guest of the broadcast explained. According to him, at present, the Kremlin regime, Putin personally and the military leadership of the Russian Federation are ready to exchange the lives of their soldiers for the desired square kilometers of Ukrainian territory. But how long will these same Russian or even North Korean soldiers be enough to carry out these missions? I have a fairly well-founded doubt. After all, everything in this world eventually has its final point, its end, and the Russians, in fact, wastefully using manpower on such a scale may end up with nothing when they will physically have nothing to attack with or even defend with. Vladislav Zeleznev concluded 